So we talked about primary product dependency, we talked about labor markets, we talked about capital markets. So underpinning it all, yeah, is probably this idea of yeah, this idea of governance and corruption. Yeah, because it's it's the state, yeah, that is responsible for any solutions that we're going to come up against. And if the state, therefore, is either incompetent or corrupt, we've got a problem. So governance generally, yeah, at that stage, I'm thinking about yeah, the idea of maladministration. Yeah, it's not it's not that anybody's stealing the funds. Yeah, it's just that they're being yeah, used for um, purposes that aren't really prone, you know, like, likely to increase development. So we've looked at, yeah, we looked at um, Eswatini, yeah, um, and there, yeah, you got, yeah, yeah, you got King Maswati the third, yeah, um, and, and we know that in spite of the fact that um, Eswatini or Swaziland is very, very poor, a lot of government money is, yeah, spent on building him palaces and buying him, yeah, buying him expensive cars. It's not corruption; it's declared. Yeah, it's always all known about. Yeah, but um, but it's not really perhaps the best use of funds. Corruption um, then is yeah you know, is going all yeah the you know, it's kind of misuse of power. Yeah, you know, is what it is what it boils down to. Um, all the abuse of power for yeah you know, for personal gain. Um, and what we can say is that it, it probably you can probably divide it. Yeah, you know, if, if we're going to come down here, we can probably divide it into high level corruption. Yeah, so that's you know basically central government. And, um, abusing power, yes, you know, kind of misappropriating funds, that type of stuff, and low-level corruption, yeah, you know, which is corruption, yeah, you know, by yeah, you know, kind of public officials, yeah, you know, at at a lower level, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, police taking bribes, that type of stuff. So yeah, so if we were to take examples of high-level corruption, yeah, you know, we got yeah, you know, in Sese Seiko, who was president you know, of um, Zaire. He embezzled, it was later found out, 40% of all of the aid money they ever received. Um, if you look at the Philippines, yeah, then uh, Ferdinand Marcos, yeah, um, yeah, he um, was yeah, the, the husband of the fame, yeah, of Imelda Marcos of the shoes. Yeah, um, he um, essentially embezzled, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, um, he essentially embezzled, yeah, kind of five to ten billion dollars, something along those lines. So... Obviously, what that's doing then, if you take that high level, if you take that high level um, corruption, um, it, it's just meaning that you, you, you know, you, you're not getting the development of infrastructure. Um, yeah, so yeah, so it means that we're not putting money into health and education, yeah, um, and areas that it could otherwise have been placed, which would lead to development. Yeah, um, obviously, it's going to you know, deter foreign direct investment, yeah, because yeah, you just yeah, you know, you're uncertain about the way in which things work. Um, and it destroys this idea of a social contract. Yeah, so people just yeah, if the government um, yeah, if the government is continually embezzling funds, yeah, then yeah, there's yeah, there's just no point in paying taxes. There's a great incentive for you not to pay them because you're not believing that they're going to be used for anything. So high level corruption then yeah, um, there's clear yeah, basically there's an opportunity cost is what it boils down to. Yeah, money that could have been used for infrastructure, for health, yeah, for supporting businesses and all types of stuff is used for personal gain instead. So when we look at low-level corruption, that's a bit more subtle. Yeah, that's normally just kind of low-level officials who are taking bribes. Yeah, is is the classic is the classic form of that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's estimated that in fact, yeah, you know, kind of yeah, if you look at if if you look at kind of bribes globally. It, the World Bank estimates that something like you know one point five trillion dollars is paid annually in the form of bribes, and that's ten times the total global level of aid. Yeah, um, and that's yeah that's 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 a huge number, and the impact of bribes is both an impact on ordinary households. Yeah, it's a pretty regressive effect. Yeah, because everybody has to pay bribes. But it takes something like about five percent yeah, um, of the income of low income uh, of high income households. Yeah, but um, oh, what's my exact figure I've got it written here somewhere? Hang on. Oh, second, six point four. Sorry, six point four percent of the income of high income households. Uh, high income households, but it's more like uh, it's around the corner. Twelve point four percent. Yeah, of the income. Yeah, of low income households. So it has a very regressive effect, increasing inequality, which can be yeah, which can be bad for development. For firms, firms now have to pay bribes to win contracts. So what it's doing is it's increasing their costs. And it's been estimated that in countries where bribes are a problem, it can add 10% yeah, to, you know, to, to business costs, which is damaging their ability to compete. It means they've got fewer funds for investment and it's deterring um, foreign direct investment. 
So fundamentally, both high and low level corruption, yeah, um, that's a major obstacle, particularly when you think about if we're going to develop, yeah, if incomes and living standards are going to be improved, it's often the government that is responsible for implementing those strategies. If the government is not capable of doing so, then that's going to be a major, major hurdle to improvement.